Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Palo Alto Network stand at Mobile World Congress 2025. I'm with Anand Oswald, uh, SVP of Palo Alto. Anand, how are you doing? Good, Zias. How are you? Good, good. I'm uh, excited to talk to you. We're here at uh, MWC. Uh, I think uh, let's talk a little 5G, right? Uh, it's interesting that the show that I think, see, you know, every year for the past three, four, five years, this was going to be the year of 5G. <laughs> And uh, it wasn't, but I, I do notice a different tenure this year that it does seem like there's more 5G momentum. And um, I'm curious if you're seeing that as well. Yeah, Zias, first, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yes. This is the year where I feel there's more 5G momentum uh, than the last couple of years, and I think it's real. You're seeing customers now getting into deployments, uh, 5G in the enterprise space, private 5G deployments in manufacturing sites. It's happening finally. Yeah. and. Uh, and what do you count that for? Like, I, I think one of the big drivers for 5G is AI. Just like, you know, cloud drove mobile, mobile drove cloud. I think AI and 5G, you know, really help each other out. Are you, are you seeing the same thing? Yes, yeah, I yeah. think uh, the interesting thing is that the 5G and AI are both coming of age in some sense at the same time. The conversion yeah. is happening at the same time. And it's driving some very, very interesting use cases for what we're driving for our customers. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, obviously, when you start thinking about 5G and AI coming together, uh, you, you got to talk about security, Absolutely. right? And so uh, explain how you, when you think about 5G security, how does Palo Alto approach that? Pretty good. If you think of uh, 5G and security, Palo Alto approaches it really in three broad ways. First, what do we need to do to secure service providers and telcos 5G infrastructure? So that's the uh, internal core network. Yeah, across yeah. all aspects. So uh, the signaling layer, the data layer, the management layer, uh, at the edge, the RAN, the roaming interface, the GI interface, across all aspects of what they're trying to do. That's that's number one. Now, as you know, service providers have spent a ton of money on Spectrum and building this massive 5G infrastructure over the last couple of years. Yeah. Now, how do they monetize it? So we want to help them monetize it by value-added services on top of that. So 5G slice as a service for enterprise customers. Or just yesterday, we announced a brand new product, Prisma SASE 5G. Yeah. Really exciting, and we'll talk more about that. The third is as private 5G deployments are going more and more. I talked to a partner yesterday that said they have 2,000 plus private 5G deployments right now, mainly leading for manufacturing, but also in utilities, oil and gas mining. How do you secure them along aspects of what they need to do for the OT uh, uh, infrastructure, both visibility and security? Okay, and, and so uh, double click there on the 5G, uh, the Prisma 5G SASE yeah. launch. Uh, what is that product, how does it work? Yeah. So, if you think about, there are many devices today which are SIM-based devices in the enterprise. Yeah. Right? More How, and more coming. More and more coming. Yeah. How do you ensure that you have the same security services, the same policy constructs that you have on the wired or the Wi-Fi network, right? Without changing the service product infrastructure. So, in this case, what we do, we don't have any agent on the SIM-based device. You use the same authentication mechanisms from the service provider, the same packet core, and then you cross-connect that, that traffic to our Prisma SASE infrastructure for security processing granular, based on MZ, based on IMEI, or any other construct you have. So now you can have the same policies that you had on your wired infrastructure on your SIM-based devices. And that's a game changer for yeah. telcos. All right, and uh, so to me, that, uh, uh, that from a 5G perspective, from the, the data center, well, from the core network all the way out to the edge of the device, secured by one continuous yes. uh, threat uh, threat protection system. Yes, 100%. Yeah, right. yeah okay. Uh, so on that note, let's shift gears a little bit to platformization. Yeah. That's been a big topic conversation within IT circles, everything from network to systems. What does platformization mean to you in the context of security? Yeah. Look, when you talk to most customers, what do they really want? They want to make more money, yeah. they want to save money, and they want to be out of trouble. Yeah. Right? If you think about... And that last one's big for the CIO. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if you think over the years, network security is complex and fragmented. What you want to do is you want to simplify and unify network security, right? You want to have the notion of a consistent policy. Any user, any device, accessing any application, any data, consistently secure. What we've done across platformization is helping our customers reduce their operational costs, simplify all the outcomes they want, have their consistent policies. I'm in the home, I'm in the office, I'm on my mobile device, I'm on my managed device, I'm on my SIM-based device. Same policy, same manageability for threats that we see, from operational things that we see across the enterprise. And that's really what we're driving with platformization. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, at Black Hat last year, I talked to a CISO uh, that said to me that for the first time in his career, it's a long time CISO, too, they, he finally realized the best of breed security 
doesn't lead to best in class threat protection. In fact, it's the opposite of that, right? Yeah, so yeah. The, the notion that a platform will have mediocre components is what which what is, is also not really true. So we're trying to get in best in class components integrated in a platform in a single UI. At the same time, you want to have an open ecosystem. There are some services that I don't have. But I want to be able to integrate those third-party services onto the platform seamlessly so we can have a consistent experience for the customer. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And uh, um, I, I think, uh, you know, in an interesting perspective, we talked about this concept for a while. Well, what's been the customer, holding customers back from being more aggressive with platform? Yeah, look, in, in many cases, it's a journey for customers because what happens is that they've already, already invested a lot of time and money in solutions that they have. They have contracts expiring, so it's, it's, it, it becomes down to a more economical discussion. So what we're trying to do is, how do you make them ready? And the platform doesn't mean that I have to have everything in the platform on day one. It's a journey for most customers. I can start with, we have customers who have our firewalls, have hardware and software firewalls, and they move to SASE and have consistent policy. But a third of our customers in SASE are net new. They use SASE first, and then say, hey, look, I want to have a consistent policy. I'm going to now replace those firewalls I had, which are fewer in the data center now because I'm consolidating my data centers and have Palo Alto firewall, so now I can get that platformization. So it happens both ways and it happens at the pace the customer wants. The goal is, what is the end goal you want to have and how do you navigate to that end goal? Yeah, now, um, so when I think of platform again, if I think of some things, like people always talk about Apple as a platform, right? And But they have a watch, a laptop, they own like three, four devices. In the world of cyber, uh, I mean, there's hundreds of devices and so, uh, from your perspective, what are the key components of a platform? Yeah. And I guess that's another way of asking, what would be the starting point for customers? Yeah. Yeah. From a network security perspective, like I said, you can start a journey from a data center where you have our firewalls. You may have in the past had different hardware appliances that did uh, DNS security or malware prevention, right? Uh, and now you subsume those on the firewall. And then as you move towards software and, and, and cloud-delivered SASE, secret enterprise browser, all those components across threat prevention, uh, URL filtering, sandboxing, DNS security, IoT and SaaS security, managed unmanaged devices, data and SaaS security, AI. Like look, employees are accessing AI applications, people are building AI applications. You don't need to deploy additional sensors, additional proxies for those. Those should be all be features on the platform. Yeah, okay. Now, every time a vendor tells me something, to me, there's no better proof point to what you're telling me is true than customers. Oh, yeah. So can you talk about any customers oh, and absolutely. the success they've had and the outcomes we, they've had? We've had thousands of customers in network security use all three form factors of network security and the platform because they get that consistent security across any use case. They get a single pane of glass to manage everything from day minus one to day end, configuration, policy, AI ops, alerts, anything that they need to do from a policy perspective. It's all fully integrated into the platform. So we, we're seeing tremendous traction on customers on the journey of platformization. And like I said, it's a journey that's different for different customers. Yeah, okay, good. Well, uh, anything else you want to add then? No, I think like yeah. it's, it's Mobile World Congress, 5G, yeah. AI, they're coming together and deliver through platformization. Yeah, well, congrats on the on the launch of uh, Prisby 5G SASE. Uh, just one last minute, any customers using that yet? Yes, we announced yesterday Singtel okay. is already a partner using our Prisma SASE 5G for the enterprise customers to give them the same uh, services that they have on the wireline side. Yeah, and actually that's a good customer because I know in the Asia Pac region, 5G, they've been a lot more aggressive oh, with yes. it there. In fact, in a lot of those countries, I mean, there's barely any terrestrial. Yes. And we have many more in trial yeah, right yeah, now, but yeah. that's what we announced publicly right now. All right, so uh, 5G coming to an enterprise near you. If you're gonna secure it, take a look at uh, 5G SASE. Uh, and uh, from a platform perspective, obviously, Palo Alto is the leader there. Thank you. So, Thank you, ZS. All right. So on behalf of uh, Oswald from uh, Palo Alto, I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research. Thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time in my next episode of ZCast.